Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, my clinic is seeing patients exclusively via telemedicine. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you my early experiences providing care via camera. Don't turn away, because that starts right now. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. If you're impacted by MS and you want to up your game, please consider subscribing to the channel. And make sure to ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming content. Now, prior to two weeks ago, I had never done a telemedicine visit. I am not an expert, I am not experienced, but I am in the real world taking care of real live human beings impacted by MS through a camera. And in this video, I wanted to share with you my early experiences. I've partnered up with Stuart Sloshman of MS Views and News. And Stuart is in Florida, I'm up here in Ohio. And today we conducted a faux telemedicine visit in part so that I can show you logistically how it works. So let's jump in. Hey Stu, how are you today? I'm great. How are you doing today? Super. I've been doing telemedicine visits now with patients for a couple weeks. Um, have you ever done a telemedicine visit before? Never. So, uh, welcome. <laughs> and I, I appreciate your willingness to do this with me. Let me start just by asking, since we last chatted about your MS, is there anything new that you've experienced that you haven't experienced in the past? Pain. Tell me about pain. Well, pain. So I have orthopedic pain and I have also neurologic pain. And, and unfortunately, it's happening more quickly than in the past when I was more mobile. I mean, sitting at home, yes. being on yes. seeing at my desk, you know, I'm finding that I'm like getting up from my desk five hours later and I'm like rigid, yeah. you know, and, I, and then I have to get up and I have to do some stretching and whatever just to loosen up a bit. So let me make a suggestion, something that could help, because this is probably a combination of orthopedic pain and the spasticity that you have in your legs. Sure. And uh, under your normal circumstances, you're not sitting for five hours. So what if you leverage smartphone technology and you set an alarm at some interval, like every half an hour or every, every 60 minutes, and train yourself, when that alarm goes off, you have to do a lap. Um, you know, you get up, you go to the bathroom, or you get a glass of water, or you just do a lap in your house and sit back down. And it doesn't have to be a big to-do. Like, it's not like you're going to go work out for an hour, but just something to break the sitting. Because the, the more you sit, the tighter that ankle and that leg is going to get. And, and, and so you, you might be able to say, okay, I've got six hours of desk work in front of me. I'm going to set an alarm and every half an hour or every hour, I'm going to get up for a minute, you know, walk over there, come back. And, and I, I have found that working with some folks that have desk jobs, you know, under normal circumstances, they have to do that. Otherwise, their spasticity is so bad at the end of the workday, they have trouble getting in their car. That's right. Is, so it's a good thing to get up and make a cup of coffee every hour. Because then after you have your coffee, you, have to, you definitely have to get up and go pee. You have to go to the bathroom. I love it. I love it. So, so, so you know, if, if you reach out to the physical therapist just to see if they have other exercises, you, yes. you, you practice getting up out of your chair at an interval, and you continue to apply the cream when it's reasonable, I would love to see in a couple of days whether we're gaining any ground or not. You know, I will. I am making notes, and I will let you know about that. Awesome. All right. Let me shift gears on you. And, and I want to do a, an exam for starting off. I'm going to ask you if you can take your glasses off so I can see your eyes a little bit better. Um, then yeah, there you go. And then close your eyes real tight. Like you're soaping them, open them up real big. Like you're surprised. Okay. Awesome. Force a really big smile. Okay. Relax for me. Puff out your cheeks. Beautiful. All right. Stick out your tongue. Uh, Wiggle back and forth. Okay. All right. Put your tongue back in your mouth. Grab a light. Um, if you can grab your phone light, maybe. Uh, my phone light. Like a flashlight. Yep. And then what I want you to do is, is I want you to hold it and, and bring it up to your eye so I can see your pupil. Yep. All right. Now bring it to the other side. Open your mouth real big. Give me a... Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. All right. So, 
So a lot that we can see there. Go ahead and if you want to put your glasses back on, looking straight ahead, bring your shoulders way up to your ears. All right, and then put them back down. Now make these funny sounds. We're starting with P as in Peter. Pa, pa, pa. Now make a T sound. Ta, ta, ta. Ta, ta, ta. Yep. Now make a ka, 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 ka. Ka, ka, ka. Now we put it all together. Pataka, pataka. And so what we're doing is we're assessing we're assessing the lower cranial nerves and the, the production of speech, and they're all perfect. That is really great. Now, if you can open your eyes real big again, and just with your eyes, yep, and maybe lean into the camera so I can see a little bit. Perfect. Just with your eyes, look far left. And now look all the way to the right. Now look all the way to the left, all the way to the right. Beautiful. Now look way up towards the ceiling and then way down, down, down. Okay, great. So eye movements really look gorgeous. I'm gonna shift gears and I wanna do some things with motor exam. So if you can do a Superman impression, holding your hands perfectly still, separate them out a little bit, please, and then flip them upside down like you're gonna hold a pizza box. All right, palms are open, eyes closed, and turn your head left to right like you're saying no. Okay, you can stop. Make pointer fingers for me, like this. Bend your elbows. And then go in a fast circle with your fingers. Yep. Now go the other way. All right, reverse it. Beautiful. Okay. Make a fist like this. Finger and thumb out. Give me some fast tapping. Now, I want you to be fancy and bring the pad of your finger to the crease of your thumb. And try to do that with each one. Yep, and hit it once. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Beautiful. Okay, now let's try it on the other side. Finger and thumb out. And then do some fast tapping for me. Beautiful. And now fancy tapping. Try to hit just one time each. One, two. Oh, that looks really good. Okay, super. Awesome. All right, make a pointer finger. Touch your nose. Now touch the screen. Nose, camera. All right, let's try it on the other hand. Nose, camera. Nose, camera. Now, I'm going to show you something. I, I want you to get used to, with eyes open, going nose to camera. All right? I want you to get really comfortable doing that with your eyes open. So go ahead and do that for me. Okay, one minute. With my eyes open. Yep. Eyes are open. All right, now, don't stop, but I want you to close your eyes and keep going. All right, you can open your eyes for me. And by closing your eyes, we're turning off the cerebellum and we're starting to test sensation. So we're, we're testing what's called proprioception and joint angle. And so I can see on that side, it actually looks really good. Let's try the other side. It actually looks really great, Stu, it's impressive. Now, in the space that you're in and with that boot on, are you able to stand up behind your desk or is it a little crowded? It's, uh, it's about three feet worth. Okay, let's try it, being careful, please no falling. What I want you to do is scoot yourself back and don't stand up yet. All right, cross your arms and then with your arms crossed, see if you're able to stand up from a seated position. Beautiful. All right, now go ahead and put your hands down. Okay, go ahead and sit back down. Now, with more space and if you didn't have a boot on, we could start to do like unilateral strength, bouncing on one leg, bouncing on another leg, or having you do some provocative walking. But I, I want to be sensitive to the fact that, you know, you've got a booted foot. You know, there's a lot that we can get done on a neuro exam. You know, sharing and bringing up to you and, and speaking with you about what's wrong and hearing your perspective on how I can, you know, make things a little bit better. Uh, like we spoke about earlier, where you were talking about that I should get in touch with a physical therapist that I know and um, making notes about about the other things that we spoke about, about getting up from my desk, about walking around, about turning off my phone, about, you know, having different the segments that I've told you about that I do with my own day. Yeah. Uh, and then hearing what you did with yours makes it just more realistic for me that I can be doing it and not thinking that it's crazy that I have to do this. Um, 
You know, there's, it, there's a lot to gain from, obviously, these telemedicine calls. Um, it's not just the patient bill going in, but, you know, to an office. It, doing it from your own home and doing it from your office or, or if you were at home and speaking back just makes it all that, that much more relatable and connectable. And I think that a lot of people will feel the, the joy yeah. of doing this. Okay, um, not a joy like in you're going to go celebrate. Hey, I spoke to my doctor. I got to see him or her on the phone, and or on or on the internet. But just that they, it's a common. Yes, it's it's a connection. Person directly. It's a connection, you know, and, and and it works both ways. You know, it benefits me also. You know, because I'm also quarantined. You know, I'm also distancing myself socially, and and I'm a I'm a social creature, and I miss my patients, and I miss the families. And so, if, you know, in the same fashion that it's calming for you, it's calming for me. It, it allows us to have that connection. It allows me to feel confident that my patient is safe, you know, and that we can, we can game out how to make some things better in the now, even the now being as weird as it is with COVID-19. Right. right. All right. Well, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate it. I'll look forward to the next time we chit chat. Maybe it's going to be uh, through a, a video conference. Um, I'll look forward to when it can be in person. And I can't wait for the world to see, you know, this type of visit and the importance of it as we go forward with COVID-19 and unfortunately more people having to be secluded. Um, this is um, a great way to do it, and I just hope that everybody can benefit from it. Take care, Stu. Have a great rest of your Saturday. Thank you. You too. Have a great day. Bye. One of the things that I hope that this video has conveyed is that you can learn a lot of information and really make excellent medical decisions across a camera. We start off the visit with talking. I want to hear from the person I'm taking care of, how they're doing, how they're doing with the global pandemic, how they're doing the quarantine with their family, how they're doing as it relates to their MS and tolerating their therapies. And we have a robust conversation. We then move into uh, an examination and as we've shown you on this video, there's a bunch of neurological information that we can learn examining someone from a distance. If we have MRIs to look at, or if we have labs to look at, it's no hardship to turn the camera and to look at the MRIs together. And so I feel like we can still have that intimate opportunity to study the MRIs or review the labs. And then lastly, we put all that information together and synthesize it. And as a team, we make our plan for next steps. If there is to be a silver lining to this pandemic, it might be leveraging telemedicine for the care of people with chronic conditions like multiple sclerosis. Presently, there are emergency laws that allow us to deliver care via telemedicine, as I've been discussing in this video. It's my hope when the pandemic ends that the laws don't go all the way back to the way they used to be, which was uh, pretty challenging, making telemedicine almost not possible here in the US. And if those laws can stay somewhat liberalized, I can hypothesize that upwards of half of my clinic visits could be done via telemedicine. And it's my hope that this may become a silver lining. My name is Aaron Boster, and I want to thank you for learning about MS with me. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I have a question for you. What do you think of the concept of telemedicine? Would you consider doing a telemedicine visit for your chronic condition? Please leave your answer in the comments section below, and I eagerly await reading them. If you have already done a telemedicine visit, please kindly share with us in the comments what your experience has been like. I know that my viewers and myself would love to learn from you what your experience was like, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Until my next video or my next live stream, or the next time I see you in clinic, whether that be face-to-face -face or on camera, this is Aaron Boster saying be healthy and take care.